guys, it is a frugal family food day and I am making yogurt. I know, like yogurt, really? I know you're like, yogurt, really? You're making yogurt? But I gotta tell you, it is super, super, super easy and it costs nothing. Like just whatever milk costs and a little, little container of starter. If you are a family that eats yogurt all the time, like mine, this is the way to do it. Plus, you can control how much sugar is in it, what flavors, everything. I personally like plain yogurt, and I use stevia in mine because who needs the extra sugar? I'm going to walk you through these super simple steps to make your own yogurt. And I'm not kidding you when I say this stuff tastes way better than it does from the store. So let's get started. For this recipe, you're only gonna need a few simple ingredients. You're gonna need a pot for the stove, which is over there sitting on the stove. You're going to need a whisk, a spatula, a thermometer of the high heat variety, so a candy thermometer or a, um, a meat thermometer works just as well. A quantity of milk, the quantity does not matter whatsoever. Clean dry jar that you're gonna store your yogurt in. Whatever quantity of milk you use will be the quantity of the finished product unless you strain it like I'm going to do and then it will actually be a smaller quantity. And the starter, and your starter, if you've never made yogurt before, will just be one container of, so your starter is going to be plain yogurt, you know, the better the yogurt, the better that you're off. You are unflavored, of course, and I'll get into that in a little bit. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna turn your oven to 110 degrees, and once it reaches that temperature, you turn it off. Your oven um, turned off is actually gonna be kind of like a warming station. Now, if you can't get it to 110 degrees, that's okay. You can just turn the light on and leave the light on in the warming station. This will take four to six hours to cure, or you can do it right before bed and let it cure overnight. It just needs to stay warm for the milk to turn into yogurt. The next step is you're going to add your milk to your saucepan. The recipe I use says four to five cups. I'm only doing two cups because honestly, it doesn't matter how much you use. You can use one cup, you can use 10 cups. However much you wanna make is how much you make. So I'm using two cups. This is whole milk. You can use skim, you can use 2%. You can probably even use half and half or cream if you wanted, I've never tried it, but I would assume you could. So you put that in your saucepan and you turn on your stove on medium high. Now you absolutely do not want this to boil. If you boil it, you will destroy. What you're gonna do is you're gonna heat up the milk until it reaches between 190 and 195 degrees and you are going to use a little thermometer, just you know, your typical meat thermometer, candy thermometer, just a thermometer that you can stick in and check the temperature. Don't touch the bottom, because if you touch the bottom, it screws up the temperature reading. We're not even close. Gradually stirring just to keep it from boiling and scalding on the bottom. You need a jar. It doesn't have to be one of these fancy canning jars. It can be an old pickle jar. It does not have to be boiled and sterilized. It just needs to be clean and dry. If you're making yogurt for the first time, you're going to need a starter culture. So I just got an organic plain yogurt. That's it. And that's going to be our starter culture. Uh, once you have made your first yogurt, you can actually use that yogurt to make new yogurt. So you never need to buy a starter culture again, unless you don't have yogurt and it needs to be plain. Don't get flavored. So stirring, stirring. Okay. We're up to 115 degrees. It's been what a minute, minute and a half. Oh, it appears to be going up 10 degrees every few seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep the candy thermometer in. Again, wanting to reach 190 to 195. 
Okay, and we're up to 145. Keep stirring and stirring. And again, the whole goal of this is to alter the proteins in the milk, not to boil it. If you boil it, you will kill it and you will not have yogurt, you will have rancid milk. Okay, we're up to 165. See how the edges are starting to get creamy and runny. Okay, 189, 190. Okay, so we have reached 191 degrees. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna let it cool down on the stove to 115 degrees. And depending on the quantity of milk, that can take anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna leave my thermometer in there and I'll just come by and keep checking on it periodically. Okay, we're at 115 degrees and so now we're gonna add one spoonful of yogurt. And again, this is to give the yogurt the cultures it needs to become yogurt. You, know, you obviously have to use yogurt active life cultures. And you just stir it up real quick with a whisk. Whisk. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour mine into an open container and see all the protein changes that you've had going on. Cover it and pop it in the oven. Remember, your oven is off. Do not leave it on. If you leave it on, that's not okay. And remember, your oven is off at this point. Do not leave your oven on. I'm sure you're wondering why I put the yogurt back in the open container and put cheesecloth over it rather than going ahead and putting it in my jar. Simple. My mother and I like super thick yogurt. Mauricio likes his yogurt thinner because that's what he has grown up with. But Mauricio doesn't eat plain yogurt to begin with and he doesn't eat a lot of yogurt anymore. So not nearly as much as my mom and I do. So I'm making this yogurt mostly for my mom and I, and since we like super thick yogurt, what we're gonna do at the very end, I'm gonna take this out of the container and I'm gonna pour it through a cheesecloth and it's going to strain out all of the whey, which is the, the liquid that's kind of cloudy that comes off of the milk. And so what is left is super thick and creamy and delicious. For those of you who are Weight Watchers out there, this is awesome to know. As I've said, this recipe has zero added sugar. It's milk. It's milk and a spoonful of yogurt from wherever you get your yogurt from. Because it has no added sugar, if you make it with 2% milk, okay, this is the calculation I have. If you make it with 2% milk, you can have seven ounces of it or two points. For comparison purposes, this container of um, Nature's Promise is 5.3 ounces. So it's actually more than comes in this container. That's a lot of food for not a lot of points. And one of the things that I like to do to it is I like to add a few drops of stevia and then maybe some fruit or blueberries, or if you want a savory yogurt, you don't have to sweeten it. You can mix it with nuts, bacon. Bacon's good in everything. Um, one of the other things I do, I make uh, granola and I'll put that in it. Um, sometimes it's sweet, sometimes it's salty. Depends on my mood when I'm making it or what ingredients I have on hand. We also use this yogurt as a replacement for sour cream in recipes. It's fantastic. I mean, it's super creamy. It's got that tang like sour cream does. And as you can tell, way better for you. I'll see you in four hours and we'll see how it goes. Now, this yogurt will last forever in your fridge. Oh, and I forgot another way to serve it. You can actually mix a spoonful of like jam or marmalade or any sort of fruit-based jelly sort of thing with your yogurt if you want it to take on a fruity flavor and, and don't have issues with adding sugar back in. Or maybe you have a sugar-free jam or jelly that you use. 
Or maybe you've used your own. Who knows? So it's about eight o'clock and I am just now pulling the yogurt out of the oven and it looks like it's set up really well. So it's still pretty thin, but I think once I strain it, it's going to look fantastic. So let's go ahead and get that strained and get it in the fridge. Okay. So this is what it looks like. You can see it's got a little bit of uh, whey around it. It's still pretty watery. Hold on. Let me guess. Then. So oh, you can see it's clumpy-ish, somewhat thin, looks pretty good, smells just like plain yogurt. So in order to strain this to make it thicker, we're taking our cheesecloth and putting it in a colander and then I'm just dumping it all in there. Okay. And then we're going to start the squeeze. So see, see how much liquid that has? It's super watery. So now oh, we're squeezing out the yogurt. So not squeeze too hard. We just want to squeeze off some of that extra liquid to make it a little bit thicker. And then I'm going to make a horrific mess getting this out. I really need an extra hand here. Should get Mauricio to come down and help me, but he would be so grossed out by this that I am not going to do it. There we go. And then of course, squeezing out this part is the most important part because this is the super thick part. In truth, this yogurt, it, the longer you leave it out, the more it'll thicken. It will stop at some point. So I probably took it out a little bit too early, but it's getting late and I want to get every bit, I want to get Melina in bed. And so I am, I'm good with that and then of course because I was in a hurry I squeezed a little too hard and squeezed out some of the yogurt I should have just let it gravity strain but I was in a hurry my bad don't do that <laughs> so anyway I hope you guys found this interesting and if you have issues with like the yuck factor of making your own yogurt I totally get that um, but once you taste it and realize that it's so much better for you and so much cheaper and so easy to make, you kind of get over it. Um, I do recommend you try it, especially if you're on a super tight budget. So anyway, I'll see you in the next one. See ya. Washed out. Do you see this? You said to click record. Record. And then Click, click on, on the camera in the middle of my oh, face. Oh, I thought you said it's just click in the middle of my face. That's what I... You got me. You think that I was just playing it? It sounded fantastical. Fantastical. Super cheap. And with that, you can continue making yogurt. If you are a family that eats yogurt all the time, look at me. I'm, I'm like stirring the air. Make sure you click on my big laughing face so you can subscribe to my channel and I'll put two videos up that you can click on. Go ahead and click on those and keep on watching. I'll see you in the next one. See ya!